Hello and good morning listeners. Welcome back to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial update with me, Shikhar Garg. Now folks, it's the end of the week and customary for us to go ahead with TGIF or uh, as we say, thank God it's Friday, but it ain't gonna be so for a few at Twitter. Elon Musk completes the deal and enters Twitter office with a porcelain sink in his hand saying, let that sink in. Now, on the other hand, RBI has announced an out-of-turn MPC meeting on 3rd November, which is right after the US Fed meeting on 2nd November. And I wonder, would we see Mr. Das doing this, uh, something similar, like uh, Musk getting a porcelain sink and say, inflation, let that sink in. So, uh, jokes apart, we have, uh, it seems that we have entered something, quite an eventful period. ECB hiking rates yesterday, BOJ meeting today, and few other central bank meetings lined up. So, JK, what's your take? What's happening? Uh, good morning. <clears throat> Actually, for once, the focus has shifted from UK to Europe. Uh, ECB meeting uh, scheduled yesterday actually uh, was not a surprise in terms of the rate hike at 0.75 percent, uh, but uh, most of the other parts were read as uh, dovish by the market. Uh, uh, Lagarde said uh, with this third uh, major policy increase, uh, we have made substantial progress in withdrawing monetary policy accommodation. And the ECB also said the uh, substantial progress has been already made in its bid to fight inflation. And in the context of inflation, uh, which has still not shown any moderation, this is indeed a surprise uh, from the central bank, who have been saying all along that there will be rate hike for next several meetings. So that was a dovish surprise. Also, the rate decision was not unanimous with three members wanting uh, only 0.5% hike. So it, it appears that there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, difference of opinion among the members with a lot of uh, you know, uh, uh, hawkish and dovish members uh, putting their case across. Uh, what market perceives is that the fragility of the European economy does not allow them to go for too much of rate hikes. That's one uh, uh, you know, conclusion. But at the same time, if inflation does not moderate, it is going to be a real uh, tough situation for Europe. The other thing which I feel uh, is this is a continuation of a certain trend that is slowly developing. Like uh, we had the Australian Central Bank earlier in the month hiking only 0.25% versus 0.5% expected. Canadian Central Bank 0.5 versus 0.75 expected, and now ECB come out with almost an indication of a put going forward. And I wonder whether uh, the Fed meeting on 2nd November is also going to throw up some surprise. Uh, I don't know how, what it could be. Would it be 0.5 instead of 0.75 or a pause going forward after November? Uh, it looks like uh, something is up. And uh, in this context, I also wonder what RBI will be up to when they meet uh, uh, in a special meeting on 3rd November immediately after uh, Fed. So it's up for our guesses only. Uh, in any case, after the ECB uh, decision, yields have fallen further across the board. 10-year in the US, uh, well below 4. German yields falling 23 basis points to trade below 2%. It had 2.53 last week. Gilts are another 25 uh, basis points and uh, that's actually well below the low scene on the day of uh, mini budget. So uh, the seals uh, coming down has not actually helped uh, the euro. Euro actually went down because the market started to perceive, uh, actually started to price in a lower terminal rate uh, for uh, Europe. And uh, also then we also have another uh, policy meeting today, uh, anytime now the Bank of Japan will announce uh, their decision. Uh, not much of a change is expected uh, because uh, several uh, officials in Japan have indicated wage increases is the key uh, for policy uh, decision going forward. And it's not there. Uh, they have so far not uh, uh, been guided by the inflation, which has actually been uh, steadily going up in uh, the uh, in, in Japan. Uh, uh, stocks, of course, had uh, some uh, consolidative uh, session, only Dow making positive uh, session, and uh, NASDAQ and uh, uh, S&P 500 slightly losing out. Uh, 
uh, Amazon results actually slightly pulled down the market. Uh, and uh, as for the rupee itself, yesterday, I, as we anticipated, it did not participate fully in the dollar's uh, recent fall and uh, traded in the familiar range, uh, taking good support at uh, 82.20. Uh, see, until we have the well-known challenges of deficits and the uh, lack of flows improving, rupee sh should continue slightly on a weaker footing. Uh, the, uh, yes, we'll look forward to what RBI does on uh, number third. Uh, so uh, till then, I don't think today also we should be seeing much of a move uh, on the uh, dollar rupee as well. Uh, then uh, GDP data from the US was... Uh, slight positive surprise, 2.6% versus 2.4% expected. Again, uh, why the market has not reacted much to this uh, in terms of uh, yields or uh, the dollar or even the stock market is that uh, it's a backward looking data one. And also uh, the fourth quarter, which has already started uh, between the end of second quarter and the start of the fourth quarter, we have had a rate hike of more than 2%. And the economy is obviously going to react to that higher rates and the tightened financial conditions. So market is actually looking forward uh, to how the economy will perform from uh, here on. Also, the data yesterday about consumer spending showed a drop to 1.4% increase from 2% increase. So consumer spending is something that uh, Fed will be uh, focused on. And we also see that the yield curve between 10 year and the three month table, which we mentioned yesterday, has slightly further, uh, you know, steep and downside. And uh, so, all in all, uh, it's a market where we are uh, on the cusp of some change in the overall uh, scenario uh, of uh, economies uh, going into a major slowdown, or perhaps is inflation going to drop uh, heavily? Uh, is that what the central banks are anticipating and um, preempting these moves? That is what uh, we're trying to guess. So, uh, yes, I think, as you said, uh, Shikhar, it's uh, uh, Friday. So we'll take a pause from all these uh, volatilities and come back afresh on Monday. Just before closing, I just want to leave you with some interesting information that the global average daily transaction in foreign exchange increased to 7.5 trillion that is 7.5 trillion per day and it is up 14 percent from the same month that is in april it was 7.5 trillion this year and it, uh, the same month in 2019 compared to that we are 14 percent up and uh, also interestingly yuan has come to the fifth highest traded currency just you know uh, give you a perspective of how the foreign exchange market has once again become very vibrant and highly participative and taking a major portion of the financial activities yeah thank you have a good day wonderful jk and yes financial markets are uh, seeing a lot of activity when it comes to fx side and uh, quite a bold move by the chinese yuan i must say and uh, why shouldn't it be i mean uh, even the Chinese Premier, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, mentioned in his vows that he wants to make China uh, the dominant uh, nation on this planet by 2049. Now, it's a bold statement to make by the Premier and uh, things uh, are yet to come on how uh, China actually goes about with these kind of updates. But on the interesting side, yes, there's a very interesting trend that uh, we are seeing of the surprising rate hikes by the central banks. Now, uh, the rate hikes are being expected of a little bit higher uh, substance, but uh, eventually turning out to be lower than what it was expected. Now, this can be a narrative that we've been talking about of breaking or softening the pace of aggression when it comes to the hawkishness by the central banks in their fight against inflation. Folks, this is something actually, as JK mentioned, we are having a kind of a change in tide and we are on the cusp of it. So quite an interesting turn of events, uh, just as we saw uh, it happened with ECB with a surprise dovish, uh, somewhat dovish stance that we could see on the domestic front. Uh, RBI, as mentioned, coming up on MPC, um, coming up with MPC on 3rd November can be something to watch out for. But as of now, the macros haven't changed much. The trade deficit continues to stay high, whereas the equity flows or FII flows or API flows are not so 
uh, significantly high enough to manage the kind of deficit that we are having. So folks, as of now, uh, there's not much uh, of the appre appreciation in rupee as we can see unless there's any change uh, in these particular factors. So that's that for uh, today. Uh, we shall come up again on Monday with another round of fresh updates. Thank you so much for listening.